In this video, we're going to do an overview of Palo Alto with their zones and interfaces, exactly what that means and how we can work those together. So when we first start, start talking about these zones and interfaces, probably the very first zone that we have to worry about is the management plane versus the data plane. And this can get a little confusing. So we'll make it really easy right here. Uh, right here, we have a picture of a Palo Alto uh, firewall. And basically what the separation between the management plane and a data plane is, is right here. We draw a line between halfway through it. And down here is the management plane. And up here is the data plane. Basically, the management plane uh, could be thought of as one device, whereas the data plane could be thought of as a separate device. The management plane is a device that is or that is there simply to configure everything, and the data plane is there to actually run things. What that means is that the two as being separate objects, they basically never meet together. Uh, one is the, there to configure the other, the uh, and then the other actually does the work slightly different point of view if we look at a network diagram here our management versus our data plane here we have a management VLAN so this guy is connected to the management ports and everything that wants to be done via that management port is ha occurs through that management port so if the um, somebody on the management VLAN wants to get out to the internet well he needs access to the internet on his own it's its own separate entity uh, and then if somebody on the data plane which the private network and the DMZ uh, and the public LAN are connected to uh, if they need to get access to the internet well then the public LAN is connected to the internet right here in theory anyways and therefore it runs through there it's essentially two separate devices if we configure something such as a default gateway right here on our um, management network then we also have to configure a default gateway right here on our data plane uh, two separate environments you have to configure them both separately it's a gotcha sometimes but we'll work it through so management plane like I said, when you're looking at the physical environment is to look at this guy and just say, you know what, right here is where the line is. It's actually right there. Um, but pretty much everything down below is the management. Everything up above is the data. Um, you connect your clients to the data and then you can connect the management configuration to the management. All right, so now we can talk about our interfaces. There were a whole lot of interfaces on that one physical uh, device we were just looking at. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways that we can configure these guys. Uh, first one is to use what's called a layer three or L3 uh, configuration. Uh, layer three configuration, basically layer three has to do with the OSI model. Uh, layer three is where you start configuring IP addresses. So you can configure every single interface on your device to have unique IP addresses. Uh, once you have IP addresses in your device, then this allows you to do all the IP related functionalities, such as routing or NAT configuration in your devices. The next one is layer two. Layer two in the OSI model is switching and VLANs. It has to do with MAC addresses and VLAN switching. Uh, and that's what the layer two allows. So if I wanted my device to act as a switch as opposed to a router, then I would enable the interface as a layer two device. Similarly to a layer two device is what's called a V-wire. A V-wire, if I have two devices, such as a couple of servers right here, and they are connected via an ethernet connection, a V-wire basically comes in here and it breaks that connection, drops it down to my Palo Alto device, and then connects it back up. So it kind of sits in between the two devices. This is sometimes referred to as a bump in the wire. 
because from the device point of views, well, I'm still connected from one side to another. I'm not going through any routing or even any switching at this point. I'm simply going through a network device that connects me right to the other end. So that's uh, VWire. Along with that, we also have what's called a TAP. Uh, a TAP is a network term. Basically, a TAP looks just kind of plugs onto this wire and pulls down and plugs into the Palo Alto and it simply sits there passively listening to all the traffic that's on the environment. If I have an environment where I want to just kind of inspect all the traffic that's happening on there, maybe I want to look for malicious activity or, or I want to profile all the activity on my network, a tap is a great way to be able to see what's going on. Uh, it's passive, so I can't uh, use the Palo Altos in order to uh, manipulate or craft the traffic, uh, but it does at least allow me to see it and report on it. Uh, lastly, uh, high availability. Well, this really has to do with a high available Palo Alto configuration and then a sub interface, which kind of starts getting into, goes back into the layer two and the, I'm sorry, layer three and the layer two configurations where you can start configuring VLANs as well as virtual interfaces inside those physical interfaces. So assuming we're talking about our layer three devices, um, we then start talking about routing. First thing to mention, uh, data plane routing is different than the management routing. Like I mentioned before, uh, when we had our uh, data plane versus our management, if we configured uh, routing on the management network, it's separate for configuring routing on the, the data plane network or on the end user network. <clears throat> Second thing to mention is that most routers automatically learn and route based on their connections. Uh, and what this means is if a router comes along, uh, let's say if we have a router right here, there we go. Uh, it is a, I don't know, just a plain router. Uh, over here we have the network 10.15.7.0 slash 24. And over here we have uh, 172.16.4.0 slash 24. Uh, by default, this router will see that those two networks are directly connected to this uh, to this router and will automatically route traffic back and forth between the two environments. That's what a router does. It's, it's what a router is designed to do. However, uh, this a Palo Alto is a firewall. Number one rule for a firewall is don't allow traffic. So by default, the routing is going to be blocked in this environment. So that's the first thing we have to realize when we're setting up our Palo Alto devices. By default, routing is blocked. We can set up routing and configure it and specifically configure it so it will learn those network devices and allow routing to occur between them. Uh, the second thing we can do is uh, with our Palo Altos is we can configure these guys to have uh, separate routing tables. What that means, if we take our router here and we say that it has a whole bunch of different interfaces on it. Instead of it just having one single routing table for the whole thing, what we could do is we could actually say this portion over here, this is, let's say lab. Let's say it's a lab one. So a lab environment can use a certain number of IP addresses or can be completely isolated from everybody else and have their own unique routing table. We can then tab over here another lab, such as lab number two. And they could be completely isolated and run their own environments. So we can isolate each of these environments with their own routing tables. So this would be like routing table one and then over here would be routing table Two, and what happens in one routing table does not negatively impact another routing table, which is awesome because then they can end up using the same IP addresses. Let's say lab number one wants to have their, their default router as 10.0.0.1. Well, lab number two can also use 10.0.0.1. Because they're two separate routing tables, you can create what's called a virtual router 
You can have one virtual router or VRF for lab one, have a second virtual router or VRF for lab two, as well as lab three, or for the accounting department, or for the development department, or even for various customers. So the routing tables give us so much more flexibility as opposed to having to have separate routers and separate environments for all of these labs. Now we can start controlling all of those from one device and see them all in one window. Along with uh, our routes, now we can start talking about zones. Now zones are a great way to be able to abstract the interfaces that we see. Uh, so by abstracting the interfaces, basically let's, if we look at our physical router here, our physical Palo Alto, let's say we look at this guy right here and we say this, this machine or this port is connected to our desktop environment. Uh, we're just now building out this environment and so we, we plug in our first cable to our desktops, we then plug in our second cable down to our servers, and then our third cable goes out to the internet. It's a little bit of a complex issue here because now we have to remember well port number one is desktops, port number three is servers, port number five is internet, but it's not overly difficult. The difficulty comes in when we decide that we need to grow here and suddenly instead of one port for the desktops, we need two. So then we take port number seven. There we go, port number seven, and we say, you know what, this should be desktop as well. So now we have two different ports that aren't next to each other and they're both there for the desktops. Same thing for servers, now we need two server ports. And then we start getting things even more complex. You know what, maybe this, this one right here is for guests. Uh, and then maybe we start throwing in lab environments and things start getting more complex because which ports are for desktops, which ports are for servers. It's not impossible for us to keep track of, but it's harder than it necessarily should be. So what if instead of saying port number one and port number uh, seven here are desktop environments, what if we just simply name them as desktop? We can name them as a zone, and then once we have the zone, it abstracts exactly which ports we're working on, and we can just simply apply the rules to the zone instead of the interface. This makes our life so much easier because it's easy to remember, oh, I'm working on the desktop environment. It's not easy to remember, oh, I'm working on port one, uh, ports one and seven, because what happens if I remember, oh yes, I'm working on port seven for desktops, but I forget I'm working on ports one for the desktop as well. Then suddenly I can start having configurations that are completely messed up uh, for my desktop environment because I only configured it on half the environment. So zones ultimately make our lives easier. Uh, one, we're able to use descriptive names. Uh, the descriptive names make life a whole lot easier right there, as well as the fact that we can assign one or more interfaces to those names uh, means that we can then configure everything together as one full unit. So there you go. There's a brief introduction into the uh, configuration of zones and interfaces in our Palo Altos. In the next video, we're going to actually walk through this, setting up some zones, setting up our interfaces into different types, setting up some virtual routers, as well as defining one of them as a default route.